Riemann Oper was premiered in 1988 in Bremen. It's a uh, two-act chamber opera with the text taken completely from the Riemann Music Lexicon. Two of the arias happen to come from the same page, so we've marked those two arias on that page and used this page as the cover of the score. This is not one of my more profound compositions, and already today it seems to be largely forgotten. But between 1988 and uh, 2018, it was produced 38 times uh, in German-speaking opera houses, and hundreds of singers and thousands of spectators enjoyed the piece. We, here's the list of the 38 productions. Uh, in chronological order. I had personal contact with all these people because I'm not only the composer, but I'm also the publisher. So I had to write the performance contracts and collect the royalties in each case. Usually people were very nice and uh, they often invited me to come see their productions. I didn't go very often, but sometimes I did. And I had some nice experiences. I remember particularly uh, a nice trip to Mannheim, where they did a, a rather good production, and uh, I remember especially speaking with uh, the the baritone, um, Alan Evans. Uh, he told me how much he'd enjoyed doing the Riemann Oper, but he says there's a problem because in Mannheim we're going to do Wagner next year, and I'm supposed to sing Wotan. And after people in Mannheim have seen me so much in Riemann Oper, they're never going to take me seriously as Wotan. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm sure he, he will do Wotan very well, as, as, he, as he did the Riemann Oper very well. The experience of visiting these performances was not always um, totally satisfying. I remember especially... Uh, in Munich, where they decided, like people often do, that since it's so supposed to be have humor, they should cast it with young singers who can run around and jump around and be funny. And uh, that's what the way they cast it in, in Munich. And uh, to the extent where one of the women even comes on stage with roller skates. Well, you know, when you're trying to be funny, you usually aren't. And in fact, the audience in Munich was not very amused, and it only ran for two or three times. By contrast, there was a wonderful production in uh, uh, Dresden. Here's a photo from Dresden. The little man in the background there, the fifth singer is not a singer. He's a he's sort of probably Riemann's ghost, who arrives uh, when the light motif comes, because the ghost of Hugo Riemann is not very amused, and he he says, uh, "I did not write a single word of this. It was all written by second class um, music historians." a long time after my death in 1919, and it's all nonsense. The title refers not to the mathematician Riemann, but to Hugo Riemann, 
the uh, musicologist in uh, Leipzig wrote what could be for the first musical encyclopedia ever written. We have a photograph of him. The first edition in 1882 was less than 100 pages long, but it was well received and he prepared longer and longer editions as the years went on, with other musicologists also contributing articles. By 1968, there was also a huge volume treating proper nouns, and the basic encyclopedia, the one I used, was a thousand pages long. You can still always find this fat volume in German language music libraries, ready for visitors who want to read long articles about Spanish music or sonata form, or look up the history of the trombone, or learn about Ars Nova or isorhythm and so forth. Uh, why would a composer want to use musicological text as libretto for an opera? Well, I like to get things right, and I like the idea that someone should finally write a correct opera, one that behaves exactly the way the authorities say an opera should behave. Of course, this is not really serious research, because composers know more about how to write operas than musicologists do. And sometimes what the musicologists say is not really right at all, but that was one of the things I liked about this idea. Fortunately, producers in Leipzig, uh, Zurich, and Cottbus all sent me videos of their productions so I can show you some examples as we go along. Let's begin by seeing how the Riemann Music Lexicon defines the baritone voice in the Cross Opera production in Zurich in 2011 with staging by Claudia Blerch. Tenors and basses won't agree with this, but how can they argue with the authoritative Riemann Musik Lexicon? The page numbers are added throughout to uh, remind people that the text comes directly from the Music Bible. I wanted to have two women soloists, but what should I call them? They can't both be the prima donna. Like most such problems, the answer is right there in the Riemann Music Lexicon. Let me translate. Since the beginning of the 18th century, Italian opera houses sometimes had two prima donnas, in which case one was called the prima donna assoluta and the other was just the prima donna. Riemann Music Lexicon, page 748. So that's what I call them. I always want to have recitative in my operas, and the article on recitative provides several pages of text that can be sung as recitative. I call recitative, it's not very interesting as music, but it gives a lot of more or less interesting information and nicely separates the arias. At one point, the recitative article emphasizes that the text in the recitative must never repeat itself because well, let's just watch how the prima donna assoluta, Maria Fleischauer, Fleischauer, did it in Leipzig. Note the statue of the Honorable Hugo Riemann in the background.
that's only the beginning of the aria. So because, of course, the prima donna assoluta has to have longer arias than the ordinary singers. I don't think the music lexicon says that, but that's just common sense. Sometimes the singers and stage directors think I'm making fun of opera. But what I am making fun of is the musicologists and the way they explain things. Of course, this observation about how recitative has to avoid repetition was exactly right. And my little arioso just shows how everything can get sidetracked if the recitative starts to repeat uh, and not do what the musicologists say it should do. But the encyclopedia definitions can be too obvious or too complex and sometimes completely imaginary. An example of something the musicologist invented can be seen in the article that defines Tagalied, the day song. I've asked many opera people what this means, and none of them have ever heard the term in German or in English or in any other language. The Tagalied, in Riemann opera, comes just after the nocturne, which in Zurich is done totally in the dark, as the lexicon says it should be. We don't see the singers at all until the next morning when they wake up after a night of love to sing their Tagalied. So here they are, finally singing a real Tagalied in a real opera with the staging of Claudia Blesch. Like all my R's, the melody is written on only two notes, D and A. The singer adds a few notes of her own, but I guess, I guess that's okay. We won't watch the whole scene, but we'll give you uh, the complete translation.
This is a pretty good example of poetry written by musicologists. I wonder what a watchman's horn sounds like. And why are they being warned by a friend? Maybe the woman's husband will find out? The musicologists don't explain that. Operas often have light motifs, so I wrote one for Riemann Oper. The Riemann Oper light motif arrives when the performers perform improperly. A good example came from a production in the small opera house in Cottbus. Here it is the pianist himself, David Neely, who delivers this little piece of recitative. He notes that the lexicon says he can insert his own quick arpeggios, but he goes beyond the limits, and this triggers off the light motif sung by the other singers. Here, the light motif is also interpreted in English as the light motif, L-I-G-H-T. The video quality is not very good, but I like the pianist, so let's watch the whole section as it happened in Cottbus. operatic form that appears on page 317 of the Riemann Music Lexicon is the gallop. This seems to be the only uh, example of a gallop in music history, and, but uh, singers and stage directors have a good time doing it. I remember a production in Enskede where the costume people spent a lot of time making real horse tails that the four singers could hang around their waist and, and be galloping horses. I want to show you the gallop as they did it in Zurich. You may find it silly for singers to be galloping around pretending they are riding horses, but that's what it says they should be doing in the Riemann Music Lexicon. And the cross opera cast, directed by Claudia Blesch, gallops around with great energy. Da 
The lexicon says that the gallop should have three parts, but I think the first two parts is enough. The Krupsche Kanone, by the way, was a firearm that we can suppose was fired to stimulate the dancers. We haven't been able to find any examples of the wild beast gallop or the Krupsche Kanone gallop, but they must exist somewhere if the Riemann Musik lexicon says so. But before we finish, I want to consult my friend Michael Kluge. I met him a few years after he finished his doctoral dissertation on Offenbach under the direction of my friend Helga de la Motte. One of Michael's first jobs was as a dramaturg with the Bremer Theater in Bremen, where he worked with the premiere of Riemann Oper in 1988. He moved up rather quickly in the world of opera direction and headed the opera in Linz, Austria for some years before becoming the director of the enormous Hanover Oper until his retirement. I haven't seen him for some time, but we decided to contact him and ask him if he would like to say a few words about Riemann Oper. Michael, are you there? Tell us where you are now and give us a few words about how the Riemann Oper has flowed through your life. I'm now um, living in Vienna. 
Um, I, I'm, I have retired from theater. I'm 69 years old, nearly 69 years old. And uh, I got to know Tom. That's uh, many, many years ago. Uh, uh, in this time, I, I started uh, at Bremen as dramaturg. Uh, my first really good, good job uh, uh, on a theater. And um, we stayed in contact. So, uh, uh, and I, 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 I read something about you, the four note opera you did before. I, I looked at that, and then you sent me uh, uh, the Riemann opera. I went to the artistic director and showed him the work, and so he said it. Okay, it's uh, interesting. I'll do it, and I'll di direct it myself. Tobias Richter was supposed to, to direct it himself, but um, then uh, one day, the last day of the season, he came to me, I can't do it. I think I can't do it. Uh, I, I have no time to do it. The singers at first really didn't like the work too much because, because you uh, one has to know that it's rather difficult to rehearse yeah and to 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 memorize all the different uh, variations uh, on only two notes which is d and a um and they were a little bit furious about me because i i was the one who uh, was i i was it's my it was my fault uh that uh, it came so they were in a really good mood uh when we started to rehearse so after the uh, holidays uh, uh tom came to to rehearse and uh <laughs> it was really not they weren't happy they really weren't happy i was very sorry for especially for tom but what what they needed and what he didn't want to give them, I think so, was to be characters, but just a, a, a group of, 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 of persons. And so they, they really, after these uh, very difficult musical rehearsals they had, they, they, they said, uh, well, it, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't work. I was very sorry about it. You stayed then a, a, another week. But um, Tobias Richter then really he 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 decided in another way. He said, "I will do it. I will do the uh, uh, rehearsals. I I will do uh, uh, the uh, I will uh, direct it." And um, now that the the, the singers um, got uh, a, a character through directing, they got more and more. Uh, fun at the work. They really uh, liked it in 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 a moment, and they they loved it. I I, I, I can say, and it was uh, uh, then a really wonderful, big, great premiere. We did it, I think, uh, about thirty times uh, in this theater, in this smaller theater. But it was people were so interested. Uh, that we took it over in, in the opera house, and uh, it also in the opera house it was really uh, full, and uh, people enjoyed it very, very much. And it's uh, it's really difficult work, uh, not only to memorize the the music, which is really delicate and and, and difficult to memorize, um, but also in the in the in the humor in the special uh, humor that is in this piece you can do it as a you know, so a little bit we say clamauk very loud and uh, and wrong it has to be stylish it have you you have to you have to do the 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 um, the, 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 the the music as is as it is uh, written one of the, the 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 problems was that you weren't as a composer. You were more interested into the structure of the composition and not founding uh, uh, characters on stage. 
I, I must admit that uh, I'm not a director. I'm not a stage director. Hmm. And uh, I found that out in, in Bremen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, other people uh, stage my pieces much better than I can. And hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's different. As you said, um, you have to let singers be characters. You have to let them invent their character and you have to be more open and i was very strict i just wanted to stick with the score and i thought i knew everything and um i was not open enough but uh fortunately uh i was a good publisher <laughs> and uh people i could work well with uh, other copper companies and it went on with uh, 39 different uh productions i but i think that now it may not be uh, be done again. Uh, I, I'm sure. I, I think I'm sure that, especially in an English translation, it would work. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Maybe someday. Meanwhile, yeah. meanwhile, Try it. meanwhile, I'll just. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Uh, we could, we're just gonna show people the title page of the yeah. edition, uh, the copyright page, uh, the seventh printing. This is the last edition that it was made. And uh, uh, for the moment, it's just going to stay there. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming online with us. Yeah. Cool. yeah.